We'll call this meeting to order. Uh, Susan, if you would please call the roll. Todd Polak. Here. Chris Leiter. Here. Kenny Green. Here. J.D. Jones. Here. Kirby Melvin. Here. Crystal Hines. Here. All right, fantastic. Uh, now I'd like to entertain a motion to recess this court, to relocate to the district courtroom in the courthouse, to provide adequate space for the people. So moved. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you all for coming. We will uh, call this meeting back to order from recess. I'll entertain a motion to come out of recess. Thank you, Kirby. Second. Thank you, Chris. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, if you all would please join me with the pledge to the flag and stay standing so we can have a prayer. Flags up here in the corner. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chris, do you lead us in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity that each and every one of us here had. Heavenly Father, let us get through this meeting with your guidance and let us ask for your path of how we conduct this meeting and according to your will. Heavenly Father, let us think of those out in our community who have recently lost loved ones, who have our caregivers and relationships. Let's pray for them, Heavenly Father. So they're our neighbors, and we ask for you taking care of them and their comfort. Heavenly Father, let's pray for the ones abroad in uniform that represent our right to be free. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Now if we could have the approval of the minutes from our September 16th meeting. Thank you, Kenny. Second? Second. Thank you, J.D. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, all right. Now I'll turn it over to the treasurer. Regina. Okay. As of September 30th, 2019, our total CDs and books total $681,011.81. That makes our grand total, including our checking accounts, Two million five hundred and seventy-five thousand seven hundred and seventy dollars and forty-six cents. <clears throat> Any questions on the monthly report? Do we have a motion to approve the treasurer's monthly report? So moved. I second. Thank you, Kirby. Thank you, Chris. All those in favor? Uh, Thank you all. We also have the quarterly report. And it's the same as the monthly except uh, for the claim um, since, uh, claims for the period of. Any questions on that, Henry? Is that a motion and a second? Sorry, guys. Yes. All monthly. <clears throat> All right. All those in favor? This is of the monthly report. Quarter. 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 I'm sorry. Thank you. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. You ready for the transfers? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, from the general fund, we're requesting a transfer uh, from reserve for transfers, $3,000 to animal control officer. And then in the road fund, we're asking for a transfer from reserve for transfers, $5,000 to operating supplies. And then a cash transfer from the general fund, um, to the LGEA fund, $5,000. I got a question about the animal control officer. Right? The reason is because both salaries are taken out of that one line. They were taken out, and it's been corrected okay. now. Oh, they're yeah, in the process of correcting. I think they said they had corrected today. Okay, so, all right. So it would be corrected next time. So. Oh, did you approve transfer? Thank you, Kirby. Do we have a second? I second. Thank you, JD. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. All right, the approval of claims. Claims, okay. Um, <clears throat> in the general fund, the pre approved court claims are one, one, $103,168.04. 
uh, port claims are $24,233.88. That makes the total general fund claims for October $127,401.92. Any questions on the general fund claims? Yeah, I got a couple. Okay. One I want to make sure of. Uh, Trump County Pollinating Club, mm -hmm. $500. Is this from, I think, the previous court in yeah. December approved this? And it was this December, this yeah. Yes. Like this? Mm -hmm. and, okay. and we just didn't get the check this year. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So they got the money. The they have now. They have now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Correct. Okay. All right. I have another one here. Uh, courthouse utilities, Time Warner Cable. They're charging us for a judge's office internet fax number and a phone number? Yes. And I didn't notice this on the previous couple, couple of claims. Is this something new or? No, that's, it just, it's always there. Okay, in the courthouse from Time Warner Cable, we get a bundle discount of $35. Can we check in to see if we can get that bundle discount for the judge's I, office? I think they have. They have done yeah. that? Okay. Yep. All right. I, I got, there's one on mine that's, and I'm not picking this, the DES travel. We got $784 worth of mileage here. That's three months worth. Huh? That's three months worth. So, like, like I said, I asked beforehand, to use one of our trucks if we're going to do that that type of model. Now there's no use us having to spend that kind of money. We got a truck to use. You're talking about just from the trips that he makes, not yeah. every day. You know. No, no, not every day. Yeah, I'm talking about the trips here. You got seven hundred and eighty-four dollars. Right. All right, I got, I got one here. I well, wait a minute. Let's deal oh. with this claim. You want to go ahead and pull this claim, or you want to no, pay no, this claim? No, no, I want to pay it. But okay. I, I need to put this in front of the motion that he'll use our truck. No. That's yeah, that'd be a good idea. I'll make a motion that if he travels outside of the of Truman County, he'll be using the uh, one of our county trucks. Do we have a second to that motion? Which county truck? No, we got, we got one out. We got one at the road park. We I mean, are. We got the. Uh, Solid waste truck too. I mean, okay. well, solid waste. We're going to leave her in the office that day. She's not going to go out to the landfill. She's not going to check other sites. If we use that truck, I'm okay with using one of Mike's if he's got guys working in a, you know, like a creek or a ditch. But if they're going back and forth, how, how much trouble is it to get all your equipment out of your truck into one of those? Do you, can you just can you travel and still do your job? And I can't be on call. And I cannot respond. To an emergency in your own vehicle, unless you have your bikes or anything like That's why hopefully we get the grant for the truck that's coming. Correct. How are you coming on that grant? Do you know? Or what? Well, it's the 31st of October. Mm -hmm. You'll know one way or the other. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. 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 Mike, you have a truck he can use until then? Probably. Yeah, I'll lose one. And, and most of these trips that you're going on, are they requiring you to stay overnight or is it something you're some do, some doing some from? Yeah. So, so you'll have the truck for yeah. a couple of days at a time. And I don't mind just not claiming the mileage either. That's, if that's what it takes. I mean, I'd rather be ready and not have to switch trucks back and forth to go to meetings and just not claim <coughs> Well, I don't want you to do I mean, I, I want to be fair. Don't get me wrong. I want to be fair. But guys, because I mean, the hard thing that's going to be, and what you all got to realize, is that I don't just work eight to five. So when stuff happens when they're gone, the truck might come. You know, I got to might have to have a truck all day and all night if we're going to haul a truck. I just can't. Where's most of this mileage going? Bowling Green? Uh, no, Frankfurt, Lexington, Louisville, Covington, uh, Grange. I, I provide a list of things on office and your stuff. The only thing I would recommend, Andrew, is that we follow the administrative code and within three days of your trip, you turn in a mileage. <coughs> when you turn in three three months at one time, uh, that I, I, you see that number. 
uh, and I think that's what causes a lot of <laughs> but, uh, I've, I've always done a month report, but I can do it right. after three. Within three days of your trip, turn in the mileage. And, uh, but we do have a motion on the floor. And we are, you will know one way or the other on the grant by the 31st. Say you do get the grant, and we'll go ahead with that then, correct? It's our plan. Yeah. But that's a 50-50 grant, yeah, isn't 50 it? 50. right. All right. Or rescind it? And rescind it. Well, well, I can throw in pay until the 31st because we see where he's at in his truck. Good. Uh, November. Uh, November meeting. I second that. All right. We have a motion on the floor to table the use of the county truck uh, for our uh, emergency management. We have a second. Any more discussion on it? All those in favor? Uh, uh, all right. Thank you. Yeah, I got I got another one here. Uh, registration conferences. They paid mine twice, Chris. That's what I'm gonna ask. Is that? Yeah. They paid mine it? twice. Okay. What we want them? Yes. Okay. Then, what kind of? This might be a question as well. Equipment, supplies, and maintenance and repairs. One from either Par and one from Veritech Incorporated. What do we have done to where they charge this mileage to come out here and work on it? And it looks like we're that was from the fifteen hundred dollars generator. Generator. Is that what that? Okay. All right. That, that's both those companies. Yes. All right. Is yeah. that something we get reimbursed from the yes. insurance company? Yes. It's okay, insurance. That's the insurance. Company. Okay. Uh, okay. This one may. This one is there as well at the EMS building. We used Wade on electric for $182 and he called, got a $50 trip fee. That's the same thing. Yeah. That's all and that's- It's all the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying as much as we use him, we shouldn't be charged for a mileage. All right. Any other questions? One other one, uh, employee health insurance or reimbursement. One hundred forty-eight dollars. That was to an employee. That was an employee that uh, fell through the cracks on getting her health insurance, and uh, we paid her doctor visit until we can get her health insurance. Yeah, She'll have that November first. How about that? Um, uh, the paperwork wasn't sent in. Paperwork wasn't sent in. Was right not. Then. So we. But we're, it is we're now. Taking care of that. Now. Yeah. All right. I was letting her fall. That's so. all right. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the general fund claims. Thank you, Kenny. Do we have a second? I second. And all those in favor? Aye. Uh, thank you all. Okay. On the road fund, the pre approved claims are $1,216.67. The court claims are $27,401.17. That makes a total road fund claims for October $28,617.84. Any questions on the road fund? <coughs> Mike that Kim worked a little repairs on the 10 speed. What do we do there? I mean, do what now, Herbert? The Kenworth. Kenworth or Louisville. Yeah, I have to call that air to get to the it's got repairs on the 10 speed floor transmission. No, not the 10 speed, you know, we can have work on it. Don't let it on one of them other trucks, one of them handling it or something. Then we got a fuel line. Yeah. <coughs> <Find> me. <coughs> Excuse me. And that was on that, uh, on that hand. Well, did you have any repairs done on the transmission? Not that I remember. I don't remember what I had it down here for. Place line one at a time. Fifteen hundred dollars. Thirty-seven dollars. Fifteen thirty-seven nine. We need to we need to hang on to that till we find out what. It is. I'll find out about it. I hope I check. <laughs> and what's it? okay on? I can tell you. Right above that is the aggregate holes and a hole sleeve for eleven hundred eight dollars. So they go on and stand. Is that part of that repair? Mm -hmm. Go on and put them injectors mm -hmm. and stuff in. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Southern Tool Supply. Is this, is this a new vendor? Have we been no. using that for a while? No, yeah. We get that down over. We go down there all the time. Really? Well, if we go down there and stop, get set up. When we're down there, get in the truck. Oh, okay. Gloves, dust masks, first aid kit, tape measure. Yeah. Is there anything we get to the hardware store up here close local? Yeah, good. Take a little more. How much? You want all work? Uh, not really all that much more. How's uh, that? Not really all that much more. One less crowd and burst. One more mic on that. Um, <coughs> parts master. <coughs> Quick service power concentrate in the fuel conditioner. Okay. Yeah, that's what that is. Come in the drum. Yeah, but. And I got one at it Craig's, a chain and oil, is that chainsaw chain? Mm -hmm. New, about new? Yeah, new chain and the oil, bar oil, mixing oil. Okay. I don't have a very good description of what it is. $425. Yeah, that's it. Is that what it is? Uh, I got the chain to lock up my Well, wait a minute. We're pulling one. We're pulling that yeah. 15. What was the voucher number on that? You need that form of motion, Judge? Yes, please. But I, I want that. Yeah, 2276. There you go. Okay. Yes, please. We can make a motion to hold, hold the payment on the Kenworth and Louisville repairs to a 10 speed floor to further. We know what it is of $1,537.90. Check number. Two six seven seven five. I second. Any more discussion on that? All those in favor? Uh, uh, all right. Now we have a motion to approve the rest of the claims. I make a motion to the rest of the road fund claims. All right. Thank you. I second. Thank you. All those in favor? Uh, uh, all right. Okay. <clears throat> on the jail fund. Um, the pre-approved claims are $80.76. The court claims are $24,717.21. That makes the total jail fund claims of $24,797.97. Questions on the jail? Uh, I'll just go ahead, Bobby. We got 70 some inmates that we're paying on now. Is that Numbers stay pretty steady, or is it? Yeah, we don't really have seven. We don't really have seven Sunday, and it's off once, and it's revolving. You may have somebody in first month, and then get out, and come back in the next part of the month, and then get out, and then come back in again. And if I get somebody for, for say Franklin County, and they don't come get them right away, and I'm charged each day, and they come So that's a combination of all that, and for both people. More than our little Jeff and Hamill, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Do we have a motion to approve the jail claims? I no motion. Move. Thank you. Do we have a second? A second. JD. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you all. Okay, and then the LGEA funds, uh, the pre approved claims are $13,363.05. The court claims are $3,072.55. And that makes the total LGEA claims of $16,435.60. Any questions on the LGEA? Do we have a motion to approve those claims? Motion to approve. Thank you, Kenny. Mm -hmm. yes, thank you, Chris. All those in favor? Uh, uh, all right, thank you all. Then we have the gross wages report for your all's review. And I got a question about one of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Our Greg, I talked to you last month. I mean, he was hired on as a 20 hour employee a week, part time, and this month was 94 hours. Last month was 110, and that's almost full time hours. I mean, you do a good job. I hear nothing but good things about you out there, but the, we got budgeted 20 hours a week. Okay. I mean, I don't know. We've been open on Saturdays, and I do that every third week. I said I can cut that up. 
Uh, anything on um, adopted events, they trim all that off, and I'll just. I mean, I appreciate the work we've done, but I mean, I mean we're, we're within the budget here. Well, that's one thing I didn't understand exactly, exactly how many hours I'm supposed to do or what I can't go over. And uh, like I said, I just trim off all the extra hours because between, uh, I guess, the Henry County judge and ours, they agreed to be open every Saturday. Um, and like I said, you know, working out, I said I just I cut it all out, you know, put it, you know, put it back in the line. And we had a conversation earlier about the hours, and a lot of those uh, where he's been over the threshold uh, adoption yeah. events right. or fundraising events and that's uh, have eat into eat into the time. And then that every Saturday thing, uh, the Henry County judge and I thought since there's a lot of people that are you know working during the week and can't make it there in, in the evenings, that maybe we could do something on a Saturday where people could go there, maybe adopt a dog or uh, make donations. That's what oftentimes they do in it on Saturdays. Yeah, we get a lot of donations, people stopping in. I mean, last Saturday I got you know some dog food, some cleaning supplies, you know, delivered, and you know I mean we don't really have a lot of place to put them. If they show up, we just leave it out the doorstep. I know you do good work on this. Thing, like, no, I know what our budget is. So, are you just doing that like four hours Saturday, or is it all day Saturday? It's we try to keep it to four hours. I mean, sometimes <laughs> around noon or so, people show up, and they, you know, we just don't leave you know, until they're done. But uh, like I said, I can, you know, I just cut, you know, cut that out. I don't know if you if you want to stay open Saturday, then Dan and Jacob's just going to have to cover all of it. We were just going to have to split up so right, yeah. the same people didn't have to you know, be there every weekend. Because right. we get in there, you know, first thing we do is get in there clean, feed the animals, you know, get everything straightened up. And, you know, sometimes we get, you know, we do a couple of options a, a day. Sometimes we don't get anybody wanting to adopt. We try not to take any, any owner surrenders on the weekend. because it's just too much paperwork to, you know, to do. Uh, you know, we don't, go, we don't chase strays unless we get a call by the price. I mean, I'm hoping to add, take his hours up to 25 a week. Well, something, but I mean, I mean, if we get to the point where we're going to pay full time benefits, take out retirement and everything else, to keep getting these options. I mean, like, like I said, I just need to know <coughs> where I need to be. I think mean, we'll just leave it in on the budget the way we got. All right, 20, 20 hours. I mean, that's what, it, what it's, what is it, 20 yeah. hours? I mean, right. Um, I mean, you do you do a great job. Right? No, I hate no, it. I, I understand. I just, okay. Like I said, I just need to know. I, I didn't understand about the whole art thing and benefits and all that because like I said, I don't need that anyhow. Right. And I don't want to add anything up. I don't have to. Right. You know, like I said, it wasn't. I guess not really explained. You know. Uh, what, what everything I'm was. Sorry about that. So, I mean, he was hired in on it by the previous court. I mean, yeah. And I, like I said, I just. You know, trying to, try to do a good job, but when we see the iron, that's fine. I, you know, I don't need to do that. Well, you are doing a good job. You want everybody on our Just where is our golf, Jake, on vacation? No, he's, he's works during the day, but he has stage fright, so he well, is nervous well, about coming I mean, in. <laughs> Would you like him here at the I, next I, one? I'd like yeah. to see him here. I mean, I can tell you what he looks like right now. All right. I'll have him here at the next one. I, I'll call him. He I, does have stage know. fright. <laughs> I can't believe who was the dog. Well. <laughs> Dogs are easier to deal with. <laughs> yeah, they don't walk back. Yeah. All right. Do we have any more questions about the hourly report? And we we will go ahead and go right into uh, department reports. And Greg, we'll start with you. Well, right now Dan Flint fell aside on, on a medical condition, so I didn't get a chance to print out and get our intake and you know output. I can't tell you every every dog we took in in September has left the facility. We uh, adoptions, we do some fosters. We get three dogs out to foster, and Friday night we just send five out on uh, transport to Chicago for adoption. And and we have eleven dogs in there when I left today. So we're doing doing good on you know turn around getting the animals in and out. Uh, we've been getting a lot of donations of dog food, cleaning supplies. We haven't had to buy any dog food this year. Uh, 
Jacob did spend one evening, the Girl Scouts called and wanted to come down to Florida Shelter. So he, he stayed up and laid on it on, uh, I think it was three weeks ago. They come down on the Cedar Brook Park Shelter the Bob, you know, they interact with the animals. And I'm not sure what kind of donations we're going to get from them because they're out uh, doing some collections. And from what he was saying, they're going to come down with a fair amount of supplies for us. What we can use, I don't know if anybody here is, is available to, for shelving. Some of the shelving we got down here is, is really rusted bad. I don't know if we can, if you know, anybody that has any that. Wood or some of the wire? Well, we wire, metal of some sort, because, you know, we have, sometimes wood's not the best thing. But uh, looking for suggestions, you know, if anybody has, you know, access to anything they want to get rid of. And if we can't do that, you know, we like to replace some, and we definitely need more shelving because. The dog feed we're getting in right now sitting on the floor, you know, keeping it in the, the one medication room because if we leave it out in the shed, the mice will get into it. So we're trying to keep it under control. So, like I said, anybody knows anything about shelving, we could definitely use some. If you want to come down and see where we can put it or what we can use, you know, you're welcome down here anytime. Now, we are having vehicle problems. We did get a left front tire put in out here cross country. Here, you're not. In a new pickup truck yet? I have not. No, we haven't got anything yet. We bought one for you. No, we don't have anything. And, and the way that went is the, the road department has that truck uh, because they needed the four door. We bought it for at the Elm Animal shelter. Control. You can't just turn around and give it to somebody else. No. no. They don't. They don't have one. So we're going to give it back. Give it no, back to theirs. the roads. We, 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 we bought it, it for them. Control. Okay. So I guess you've got a truck. Well, I mean, we can use it because, like I said, the, the one we have is having problems because uh, the engine's stalling more frequently. I mean, it just shuts off. You come into a spot, and of course, when that stops, you got to lose your brakes and steering. Uh, yeah, and, I've, seen, uh, I've seen Jacob out here. Though. Oh, okay. The transmission is, is getting uh -huh. bad. The clutches in the transmission are slipping, and it, it likes banging into gear. So it's yeah, it's definitely rough. I mean, that, that was my understanding when we bought the two and trucks. That was the one ours. was for that was M patrol, too. one was for the road department. Until we, got, until we got the trucks and saw the need at the road department, it was a little more uh, dire than we thought because of the truck that they use for the cold patch. It's rusted out. Mike, you could probably speak a little more to that. I thought we were supposed to put back down and take in with it. Well, we got the budget. It did come out of the general fund. Right. It did. The, stick, the smaller truck. The two door. The two door. Yeah. I know he wanted four, but two's better than what you got. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just, it'd be nice you need to haul that trailer. Definitely four wheel drive because, you know, some of these back roads we get into is just, right. you know, we really need that. Especially come winter. Yeah. So, Mike, with you, we need to look at another truck for you. So as far as so Greg can come get the truck I think tomorrow. Get it ready for him tomorrow. All right. Mm -hmm. Come on, hey, get it tonight, Paul. Mm -hmm. I ain't got to drop tonight. Get, we, we do it tomorrow. We do it generation. And the, the, the vehicle you're using now is it got any value at all? I mean, is it something that could still be used by one of our departments, or is it shot? It's. I mean, it's rough. I don't, like I said. It's, uh, the engine stalls quite a bit, uh, transmission's rough, and the engine sometimes, when you stop and, and just idle, I mean, it surges. How many I mean, houses got on? 200, so, uh, over 150, 170,000, something around there. I mean, the body is starting to get rough. I mean, there's places on it that, uh, like I said, the, the front end, the left front's wearing really bad. I don't know if you got tire rough problems or, or what's going on there. But, like I said, it's not both tires, so it's, you don't know if it's alignment with the front ends. It's rough and so. Now I think it's for parking and you didn't pick up truck. Yeah, and a lot of your dash controls don't work. <coughs> and I think that's something we could, we could advertise for sealed bids. See who wants to buy it. Now, do we have a sticker to put on this door? No, but I'll order them. Yeah. Yeah. So, they took a couple of the same miles. Well, like I said, it's big we got is rough. The transmission on the way for it is just a little bit. We'll get those stickers. Yeah, no, I know that. It's, 
They said as long as it runs better than what we got. All right. Thank you, Greg. Now, Mike, we'll go into you with the roads. All right. We've been working on the truck, shaking the fender, getting them all ready, painting the plow, got them ready. And uh, putting plate, bought the plate, putting the bed in the truck, working them over, having them welded on, getting all them ready for the winter. And, and Mike, do you remember what the two hauling bills were for hauling asphalt for us? I think one was uh, $92 an $92 hour. An hour. That's for hauling that asphalt. That was the cheapest one. Yeah. Uh, it was eight times. <coughs> was it eight times? For each truck. For each truck. Or we could go get it ourselves. At yeah. $60 a ton? Yeah. It's a $60 a ton. What are we going to see some asphalt? We got to make a decision. We, Because the last court we talked about it, and we talked about calling somebody else to do the hauling for us. Yeah. Uh, so Mike's made some phone calls. And, and what he brought back was, was it 85 or? 85. That was the cheapest one. I thought 92 was. Okay. For a truck per hour. Yeah. We're get it ourselves. That's right. I'd rather get it ourselves too. Well, you know, it's we, getting in the weather now. It's right. going to have to wait till It's very close. March, April, we get it in the out. I don't want to put it out there now and not, get, not see it or not. No, I think it'd be better for us to start down there on that paper bond sometime where we get the road closed and get that you know, line down there. And, and speaking of that, we had, uh, as you all know, we got the discretionary money from the governor to pay for the repairs on Cooper's box. It was uh, around $394,000. And uh, that was with the geostabilization that uh, had put in a bid, I think it was back in June, that it was in your all's packets. We tabled it to see what was going to come of FEMA. that. Uh, I ended up going through discretionary and getting the free money. Uh, so I guess that comes back to with you all. I recommend that we would go ahead and use this geostabilization company who works with our road department to go ahead and fix Cooper's bottom. Those those three sites on Cooper's bottom. I agree. In that bid, it didn't call for asphalt, but I want to make sure the asphalt when it's done. That, and it would have to be. Yeah. Because of where it's at. Yeah. Those three. Road slippage, right, yeah. road slides. Right. And is that something they can do now, or work starting? Yeah, now? they're I'm ready. Assuming. They're ready to get started work. They, well, they want to know an answer tomorrow. Well, uh, I'll make a motion to go ahead and get started on that. All right. You want it in the form of a motion? Yes, please. Uh, I'll make a motion to go ahead with the geo stabilization and to work with our road department for the repairs with the stretcher. No, I second. All right. Is there any more discussion on that? All those in favor? Uh, uh, thank you very much. Mike, I got one question. How much more of the cold pass we doing? Because I have, well, I have two calls now. We talked about one about uh, motorcycles. Don't like that. Oh, the total pass? Yeah, yeah the cold problem. pass. Mm -hmm. it's, I know we're getting out of motorcycles. I'm just putting it on track. Like you know, right, they, they one, I mean, I think Randy up this afternoon to do the broom and bring it around. Yeah, I still say if we can get that stuff broomed off, I mean, that still might be a good bit of riding season left, but I don't know, but yeah. it's rough on a motorcycle. <coughs> All right, we'll move right into emergency management. Andrew? Uh, so you already know about the truck grant. Uh, what about that? The 31st. Um, the air pack grant that we applied for back in was May when we applied for it, uh, we did not receive any funding for that. Um, their priority was cybersecurity. Um, they gave a couple of the larger cities over $200,000, so they didn't give us any money. Um, still working on a siren grant through KIPTA. Um, to get a siren out there, either at Tom Boaz's place or near here in Bedford to fix uh, the one at the firehouse. Um, still working with them, We're trying to go through the avenues to see which one's better for us. Um, we have a signature healthcare evacuation drill on the 7th. Um, that was through the LPC. Um, it went well. A lot, of, a lot of things were brought up on different procedures, um, both fire department wise and both. Um, for the facility, so that was interesting. Uh, LBC meeting was the 15th. We had 22 members in attendance. Um, as 
then over this weekend, we had a VSAR class with 16 people in it um, from across the state. They were all from all over. So that went well. And then um, just a reminder that the 2nd of November, and this is open to the public, um, it's a National Weather Service spotter class from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. You just have to register online. So Where's that at? It's at the extension office. So if you go to my Facebook page, the Trimble County Emergency Management page, then there's a link to the actual place where you register. <coughs> Joe Sullivan from the National Weather Service <coughs> teaching that. So it's a good class to have. And that's free. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's one of their services they provide to all the counties they serve. All right. Y'all have any more questions for Andrew? All right, let's move right along to our jailer, Mr. Temple. Thank you, sir. Where you going? Is this good enough? Over there, over there. Right in front of the camera. Hey, right there. Right there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we done discussed the jail, <laughs> people we have in all. Things you probably don't know, I want to thank these three gentlemen, and I need to apologize to you, I didn't call you, and I don't have your number, we, I need your number. We had a van Same problem. I didn't have a computer with me at the time, okay. I was on the road. <laughs> we had a problem with the van, had to have fixed, I had a quote from a mechanic, $1,500. These gentlemen sent me to the county barn, cost us, what was it, like $47? I was way very mad. Yeah, yeah, it was 47 dollars so, and of course, I got hit at uh, Junction 625 and 421. Got the van, uh, the Explorer fixed. I don't know what the price was. I'm sure it didn't cost us anything because the guy hit me. And um, we're going to have a bill coming from the emergency room, two bills from a lady we had in jail. Uh, got that taken care of. We spent the biggest part of the weekend, a couple of trips, uh, our illness. Other than that, everything else is a go. All right. Any questions? Herbie? <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Bob. You all. Thank you. All right, now our EMS director, Will McCoy. Uh, so far, since January, we've responded to 819 calls. Um, from that, uh, we have filled out 540,889 dollars and 23 cents. Uh, from that, we've currently collected $206,054.80. So, uh, that's really, really well. It's over, uh, we're on point to, to collect quite a bit of money. So, um, also, uh, the stretcher repair that you all had uh, approved, uh, they had a problem with the stretcher and the board being compatible. The board that we had talked about getting that was refurbished was for the previous year model stretcher. So they got the year model wrong from the serial number. So they don't have a refurbished model board for this because it's too new. So the only way to repair it is with a new computer board which the cost would be $4,280. How many ambulances do we run? Uh, between two and three a day, on average. the fourth one? Uh, it's, it's in storage. Can we get the stretcher out of it and use it? Uh, that's what I've done so far. Uh, so this would just be basically a backup? Yes. For when we have a truck in the shop or Something of that to stay of three <clears throat> So the question is, do we want to run with four or do we want to run with three? I don't think we've got the personnel to run with four. I mean, uh, I know mm -hmm. we've talked, and you said it's, if we put this 4200 into it, it's a $17,000 stretcher again, right? Right at 27000 27000 <coughs> Which structures are on the other three? What kind of type? Uh, we run uh, Striker <coughs> Power Pros. So all three of the other ones have strikers in them? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, one of them is a first generation that's not compatible with the loading system in the two newest trucks. So it won't, won't self-load? It will not self-load. 
We really don't want people picking up a person that's injured. We want the self-loading that saves one back injury will be well at a zero on the back of that 4200. You, uh, hurts the back. one you showed me that when I stopped out there two, three weeks ago, yes, and raised up with a button. Yes, the one that needs refurbished won't do that, right? Yes, it'll it'll lift. Currently, it's broken. It will not lift itself. Will not lift itself. Will not lift itself. Which ambulance is there? Uh, I currently have it in the oldest truck, which is sitting there uh, in storage. Uh, I'm hoping to receive, which I talked to uh, Kentucky Board of EMS today, uh, annually we receive an ambulance, plan, uh, ambulance block grant funding, which is $10,000 a year. Uh, we have stored two years worth, and they're going to allow us to use the third year, which is this year, to purchase another loading system for our trucks. Um, so it won't be but a very small amount of out of pocket to put that loading system into a new truck or one of our current trucks. If you get that, which one you go put it in? Um, it must be the one of the old two. It is, yes. It, it was not a when we bought this last new ambulance. It was to replace one of the ambulances anyway, where we could have three up the front. Yes, because the old two were getting kind of had to put so much money in them that it was hard to keep them going. So, <clears throat> and we got enough money, manpower to run four. If we run four, if one of them old two's going to break down, and here we are again. At times I have ran four, but I mean it, it's you're using volunteers, and it's it's a it's a game. When will you know about the block grant funding? When you, you uh, get, is this a it, grant you applied for? I, I will apply for it by the end of the month, yes. And uh, I did talk to uh, the finance person at k -Games and it's it's a guarantee every year. Um, Regina, how many years? Several years, I don't know. It's, it's every year. It's every year. You use it to buy the loading system that goes with the stretcher. It's two separate pieces of equipment, but they integrate into one. Do we have to have this computer board for this stretcher before yes. we can get the loading? Yes. And what, 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 we're, we're going to put it in the best old two we got. Yes. 83, 85, whichever one I read, right? Yes. When will you know you get that funding? You say you apply for it on the 30th, by the end of the month, but you know in December? Uh, I believe so. They they usually cut that. I'm not sure when those checks are coming in. It's, uh, I believe, we'll know pretty, pretty, pretty quick. quick. Yeah. <coughs> well. I guess I would like to see three ambulance, all with the loading systems and the strikers working properly. I really don't care about the fourth one. I think that's the way they're thinking. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. we thought we were going to eliminate that one. Uh, but I also don't want to lose a stretcher for just 4200 on a $27,000 $27, piece of equipment. Yes. But if we also hold on to it and wait till like a year or so, they'll probably have to <coughs> finish boards by then. They might. And then they would be about two grand probably for a refurbished board in a year or so. It's a possibility. possibility. I can't, I can't yeah, answer I can't for answer. sure. We're just trying to think financially. Yes. I'd, I'd like myself like to hold up on this until, for one, maybe like you say, kick it down the road and it'll, it'll be less than a year or at least until you get the block grant and know that you've got that. Okay. Maybe we can address this again. That's why I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to we table this $4,280 request until a few things before we find out a few things block around whether it actually works. You need to get that loading system where we're going to put it and what's needed at that point. Okay. That's, uh, Chris, you want to put that in form of a motion then? I did. Okay. And do we have a second? Yeah. Second. All those in favor? Uh, thank you guys. Anything else you got, Will? Uh, I don't have anything else with you. Yeah. Well, appreciate your hard work, Will. Thank you guys. Right. Thanks for providing all those numbers for us, Will. All right, next is our sheriff. Everybody's favorite person during tax time. <laughs> uh, it's 
figure that. It's in full swing. We had a month, or from the beginning of the month, we had a day. We collected like 220,000, so it's, it's coming in pretty, pretty fast right now. Uh, we are open till noon on Saturdays. You take a check tonight. Take a check tonight. A little uh, credit card. Not firstborn. We can't take dogs or cats. That's his job. Uh, so tax time. Uh, I didn't set the rate they did. I just collected. So when you come in, don't be mad at me. Um, in the middle of an audit. I think I think she finished. I wasn't here Friday. Uh, I think she finished Friday. So the results from that should be coming in time. Uh, I don't know. I, I think I did fine. They say that she's a strict auditor. She's pretty rough. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And the last thing is uh, trick or treat is on August thirty first. Six October? to eight thirty. Let's do it in October. October thirty first. That's what I was going to say. So I'm like a trick or treat guy. I don't know how the sheriff got the responsibility of setting the trick or treat hours in Trumbull County, but everybody calls the office when it's trick or treat. So. Pass the word. It's on Halloween. It's an appropriate time for it. So, unless y'all have any other questions. August would be nice. August would be nice. Eight thirty or eight o'clock. Six eight thirty. I figured kids want to have fire. Parents probably don't. And I think Milton's doing it six to eight. Well, come to bed for them. Yeah, so we'll be a little bit later. Started <laughs> now. Yeah. And uh, Tina Brown. Uh, she has some things to discuss too. Oh, yes. Okay. Let's do the light. Okay. I think you all have a letter in your packet. Every October, I ask for a subsidy to end my year. Um, this year, I'm asking for twenty-three thousand. Last year I asked for $21,000 and in February I turned over excess fees of $32,000. So I don't see any problem with um, turning in more than $23,000 that I'm borrowing come February of next year. And this um, is just to keep your office running until the funds come yes. in and then we get reimbursed. My in-house computer system runs the delinquent tax system for the county the franchise tax bills system for the sheriff um, and all the deed and mortgage books that are recording runs through that system and uh, we have uh, the newest equipment last year we got new equipment from the company and uh, we have a new backup system it's called Syntology and the backups are running now every 15 minutes so every 15 minutes it backs up everything that we've ran in our office so if there's a disaster they should be able to get us up and running within just a few hours if we had the location that we needed to be in so so could we have a motion to uh go ahead and give this twenty three thousand dollars to the county clerk yeah, I make a motion. All right. Thank I'll you. Second. Thank you, JD. <coughs> Any discussion on it? All those in favor? Uh, Thank you very much. And I too went through an audit with the same auditor Charlie has. I've not received my exit interview, but I don't see um, she's not told me anything that has been major in any way. So I think it's going to be a good audit too. But. Uh, should another week she should be back with me to let me know my exit interview and election is in just a couple of weeks and everybody here please vote 17% <laughs> voted last election and um, I'd like to see us have the best in the state because we've got the best people in, in the state in this county and I would really like to see our numbers <coughs> So that was the number for our county, 17%? 17% and what was county. the statewide? I believe statewide was 19. I knew that was close, so. Yeah. Did we get our, your safety or your sacks for the? Yes, they've already came in. They're really okay. nice and more durable than I thought they were going to be. And bigger than I thought they were going to be too. So All right. we've got those and we're ready to roll with those. So okay. we're packing bags tomorrow. So if anybody wants to help, come back. <laughs> Thank you, Tina. Thank you. Lot. And uh, I'm very sorry, Michaela, but I, I bypassed you because I had some notes written here. 
so now for Michaela. Hi, for everybody. Solid waste. Thanks for coming out. I'm Solid Waste Race Coordinator, and thank you for the comments um, from my office. I wanted to also ask for an office table and chairs. Might as well get that out of the way because I need them for meetings. And meaning that, um, like the fall cleanup, I had everybody come to the office, and I got over seven groups together already. That's journal organizations and adults doing the cleanup. Mm -hmm. We have the funding for it. Also, applied for a new grant today. I was shown by our judge. So, and also we have five cleanups in the county already. We have seven landfills I got to take care of. We got uh, 22 residences I'm looking at and doing contact <coughs> with. Um, four large communities, like meaning there's a whole area where people live, you know, a whole road basically, I don't want to say the name right now. But if you're making any information on that, you know, I also have pictures. <coughs> um, I'll follow up on everything. Like I said, the clock cleanup up is well on the way. That's going to be nice. Um, the dumpster program as well is making money as well. We're keeping it rolling. So, um, let me see. The landfills, I've been four tri five trips already. Nothing under 400, 400 pounds. Uh, the biggest one was 820 pounds. So that's quite a bit. And um, yeah, I don't want to ask for a table and chip and the bookcases from my office. Is that what this is? Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's really, really cheap. Right. Mm -hmm. I got boots there for $5 already. <laughs> <laughs> I climb around the landfills, right? Yeah, I mean, do you want a motion on Please. this? Yes. Yes, please. Yeah, I'll go ahead and make a motion. I'll just just table in the two little cases for 225. Yeah. 250. Yeah. And I'll second. Okay. Also, we have uh, one in court, one in residence in court. One in court already. One in residence. Oh. Mm -hmm. So we got a motion and a second. For the yes, business. we do. Yeah, to go ahead and make that purchase. We have any more discussion on that? Let's take it. Okay, all those in favor? Uh, and Michaela, uh, talk about how many uh, landfills you have found just in the last uh, six weeks. I haven't been on the job since. Yeah, I guess five weeks. <laughs> yeah. right. She got started early. How many of them? Four weeks. Yeah, I just want to, I'll go ahead and tee you up a little bit. Uh, she's brand new to the, to the job. Yeah. Uh, she is an immigrant into this country. She comes here with a very uh, good work ethic and uh, she, she doesn't see names. So if you have a landfill. Uh, You're talking illegal landfill dumps. Well, well landfill. if people are dumping garbage on their property, even if it's in the back of their farm, uh, and it's seeable from the road, she's going to get to work on it. And, and how many has there been? Three? Right now, seven. 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 <laughs> and I don't mean just somebody dumping the back. This is like a huge amount of stuff. And I have to go and find out who the property belongs to. Um, who possibly could have put that there? I mean, it's a hazard for everybody. It decreases your property value. It's bad for our, for our water. I mean, I didn't come here to get sick, did you all? So, right? Got to clean it up. Right on. <laughs> so, I, you know, we rolled around and we, you could have several that day, and I, I appreciate the follow up you've done on it. Right? Yeah. yeah. Got the clean up the next day. Yeah, we rolled around and picked up a TV and an old car. <laughs> put me in the creek. I tell you, she made me clean out a creek as I was going down with her. But it works. <laughs> That's why I got my dog. But yeah, I've been on it. And now, even the, what's even worse is now I didn't. I've been driving around doing this, communicating with a lot of people. Some people have different reasons. Like one gentleman. Uh, his wife's gone, and he has two barns full of stuff. So I'm trying to coordinate where we can give those things to where people need them. So I'm doing that on top of that, and I love it. I really do, because you get to meet so many different people. And like he was saying, I'm not born here or raised here, but I became a citizen, and yes, please vote. It's all right, please. I think that, and I love it. But um, this is really serious, and like I was saying today, for instance, since the lease came down, I thought I was doing pretty good in some areas. Good gracious. Y'all can see it. <laughs> now you can really see it. But yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different things connect to each other. And some people just can't help it. So I'm trying to help them. That's the trips for the landfill. And I did five of those already, and it's making a difference. So, glad to be here. If you're fine on these landfills, how are you going to defend them after the end? 
uh, from happening again. Yeah. Uh, information, talking to people, and showing them that there is consequences. I will help you, but there will be a consequence to your action. And we're talking about some of them I found there have layers and layers, so many years of years. So if somebody, if we didn't define that before, but my, now we're setting a standard, and this going to be more public. I mean, he feels like I've already been there two months, right? So, <laughs> so if we set a standard, I think that we're that we're gonna. I, I'm gonna stay after. I'm not gonna go nowhere unless they fire me. I hope not, but you know. But I, I really want them to understand why we're cleaning up. First, what is the reason it's there? What can we do to help you? Well, this is what's going to happen if you don't clean it up. And here's why you shouldn't do it in the first place. So you get resources, you can call me. We have dumpster programs. We have all kinds of different options. And I'm learning more because I'm going to training soon. <laughs> the documentation helps, too, so that we can go back to the same locations to see if they're, you know, repeat offenders. Once we find them, then we know who to, you know, focus on. Yeah, and I do that a lot. I've been in security before, so yeah. I do a lot of follow-ups. That's why I need my truck. It's a little easier now in the fall because some of them we couldn't see because of the leaves and the trees. And yeah, it creates a whole new world. Unbelievable. But there's reasons for it. So, and some, like I said, no, no judging. I mean, some people, some people just can't help it. Circumstances do happen where life changes. What if somebody got hurt and they just don't have the help or financially or whatever it may be, you know, just help them out, try to fix it. And that's where community comes involved too. So, like that cleanup we've got going on. Good question, though. Right. Y'all have any more questions, questions uh, for Michaela? The, the fall cleanup's getting ready to happen just yes. this weekend? Uh, we're not going to just do the weekend. I'm going to do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and Sunday because of church. And if anybody has a has a group that wants to do like the following week, because of Halloween, that's okay with me too. Have you got all the slots filled up yet? Or? I can have more. I have seven show up, and there's two more that's going to sign up on top of that, and another 4 H is going to do it. So, yeah. I'm doing color coordinating. You know me. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we'll get it there. Thanks a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Michaela. I'm getting my table ready. Right? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, now I've got on the agenda to, to, to discuss Bigfoot Festival. Uh, you all live around here. You've all probably all heard uh, uh, conversations about Bigfoot in Trimble County. Some of you may know stories about Bigfoot in Trimble County. But we do have a, a gentleman in the county <laughs> who is uh, world known for his Bigfoot casting and uh, his Bigfoot hair and some of these other uh, uh, things that he has collected inside Trimble County. Uh, his foot castings or replicas are in the museums uh, in various places in the world so people know where Trimble County is because of Bigfoot. So this gentleman asked me about putting on a Bigfoot festival and uh, I would like the court's blessing on that because I, I think it's great. It would be similar to the Apple Festival but the theme would be Bigfoot. Is he here tonight? He's not here. No. The gentleman wants to put it on. I'm sorry? The gentleman wants to put it on. Is he here uh, he is, I don't think so. Thomas Shea is his name. And he works a crazy schedule, but uh, there's a team, a team of people you know, that would take to put that on, similar to the Apple Fest. I, I thought they was putting on an event in Trimble County already, uh, down at the bottom of Thorn Hill. Uh, I thought they did a couple of years ago. I don't know if it goes on annually or not, but uh, Steve Walsh was helping them back then. You know, he was selling t-shirts and everything else, mm -hmm. you know, good foot. So. Oh yeah, it's a big thing. But what, what all are you talking about as far as a festival? Uh, they would do it at the park. And I'm, I'm thinking a one-day event to see how it goes over, see if, you know, we, uh, the, the big thing that we're talking about is bringing in speakers that are on the History Channel and the Sci-Fi Channel, these Bigfoot uh, experts, to come and, uh, and give speeches and then collect uh, local information from people. Uh, I just think it would be a good thing. It, I, don't, I don't think it would uh, 
put a bad mark on our county whatsoever. I mean, has anybody put a, a budget together or where's they're, the funding coming they're, from? They're going to meet tomorrow, and he's he's asking for sponsors and things like that. Uh, but tomorrow at two o'clock. But it's no cost to the county. No, other than using the park. Using the park. Yeah, using the park. That's why I'm asking for the blessing of the court. Uh -huh. We let everybody else use the park. You know? I mean, yeah. It's the county's It is. Because they follow the rules of the park. You right. Know? It's not a conflict with something else that's going on. Right. What's that going to tell to our sheriff? I'm going to have to add an empire. I hear that Bigfoot's a bad dude. <laughs> <laughs> Even if he shows up. I don't I mean, I don't, we can't you know, keep any group from using the park. You know, it's there. <coughs> Yeah. Don't cost us. I don't, they've been hunting since the 60s, I think. Or uh, uh, so oh, even yeah. back in the 50s, there was a story about the it uh, down around Connect Creek. Some of y'all may have heard about that. Okay, so we're good on this. Well, I want to like, like to take a motion. Just, just one question. Uh, what about the county's insurance with these people coming into the park? Right. It, is it, you know, the same as a, a little bit playing? Ball there. And I have uh, reached out to Keiko to, to see about how the, what this would cost, and I, I have not heard back from her yet, but when the fair was going to do a two-day event, they were going to charge like $1,400, and uh, I, would, I would tell the Bigfoot people, this they is, would have to cover. they would cover the insurance, we cover the property. Yeah, but I think that's a good point. We definitely need to have some assurances that yes. they've got their liabilities insurance mm -hmm. in place. Just for events. I believe yeah. they have that as a signature or something else. Yeah. yeah. Well, they would, we would get the liability so that we would make sure it's covered and then they can Yes, and We don't want them just to get the policy. Right. We want to make sure we get the policy. And that's right. So we have that in the form of a motion and they pay their own insurance? As long as the county's not liable, we're not, we're not costing nothing, yeah. Well, yeah, we pick up the policy, right. but they'd have to pay us. Mm -hmm. right. Well, isn't it? Isn't the fair board covered under their own policy? We pay. So you pay. Fiscal court pay. I thought you just have an umbrella policy for anything. That when the fair comes, it's it's like an addendum or something. Regina, do you know how to understand how that works? <coughs> it's an it's an act like a ride or something. Yeah, like a ride. But that's like an amusement park, and there's more risk to that. This Absolutely. is people walking around talking and looking for Bigfoot. Bigfoot shows up. I think Bigfoot shows up at the sheriff's when you get extra cash. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't think it'll be. <laughs> I, I mean, we we got you know they want to use that. I make them all still. Thank you, Chris. Do we have a second? I second. All right. Thank you, guys. And <coughs> all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Super. I don't want the park to take care of until when they leave, not a bunch of litter laying around and stuff like that or whatever. I don't know what to do. Uh, have to follow the rules of the park. That's right. Uh, and on this, uh, going on now to about the audit from 2017 to 2018. Uh, back in June, I had put in the packets, and I, I put it in again uh, because Kirby had asked about it, about our responses to uh, some of the findings from our audit. Uh, the number one was that uh, Trumbull County Fiscal Court did not properly issue purchase orders and lacked invoice support. Uh, I sent out a memo to all the department heads and talk to any employee who buys things for the county they must do it. that was back in june the letters hanging downstairs on the letter board we have purchase orders for everything so that that's been working real well wouldn't you say regina on your end uh the next one that we didn't follow correct bidding procedures uh that was a truck that was purchased by the previous court that they couldn't find where the court had uh, bid it out. Uh, my argument was we had gone through the state. I mean, it wasn't me, but the previous court had went by the state contract. Does that sound about right to you, Kenny? I do know on the bidding. It's something I think we talked about it. In, uh, I think it's House Bill 26 in this last session. If we want to, it's at 20,000 now. Yeah. But in order for us to take it to thirty thousand, we have to put it in our administrative code. That we are with the state. We, we are with state that house bill, house bill twenty six. So that's looking forward, we might want to put that in there. 
the, uh, number, the number three was the encumbrance list is not maintained and reported to the Department for Local Government. Uh, we are maintaining an encumbrance list and will be reported to the Department for Local Government. Time sheets and other payroll supporting documentation was not provided. Uh, in this administration, we're doing better at preserving those documents so that uh, the next audit that comes around will have that documentation. Trimble County Fiscal Court lacks adequate segregation of duties with compensating controls in place. What they're talking about is internal controls. And that was the reason for our administrative assistant. And uh, she worked with Regina and worked with Lisa, uh, just kind of double checking everything, everything they do. Uh, debt on the quarterly financial statements was not active or accurately reported. Uh, the liability <coughs> sheet was attached to the quarter, is attached to the quarterly reports. Uh, number seven, Trimble County Fiscal Court cannot write off ambulance debt. This is uh, the company that does that for us uh, was just writing it off because it wasn't getting paid. But since then, uh, Will has had a conversation with them and they will not be writing off any more debt. Number eight, fiscal court did not approve the jailer's salary prior to the beginning of the term. Uh, we all know because we're elected, raises cannot be given until uh, the, the meeting before the May primary of any elected person's uh, election cycle. Like for instance, the May before uh, Bobby was elected is when his pay raise should have been given. But the previous court had done it uh, and weren't aware of that, I'm sure. Uh, number nine, the Trimble County Fiscal Court does not conduct an annual inventory. Uh, I've worked, talked to Will, talked to Mike. Uh, they are working on, or they will have inventories. I think, Will, you said you could just pull it up pretty quick, couldn't you? Yeah. Uh, before July 1st. So that we have that. Number 10, the Trimble County Fiscal Court data breach policy does not address county specific operations and employees' responsibilities. Uh, I had told them that I was working on the administrative code and we will have a data breach policy in place. This is something that also the IT company that we recently contracted with is. Uh, helping to write that policy. So it's more specific to Trimble County. The one that we have in place now is not adequate? It is. They said it's too broad. It's the same as the state. It is. Yeah, what, but they said it was too broad. So they, they were going to look at it and, and get us a one that fits us. Mm -hmm. I thought it was basically the same as sheriff and the clerk's office was using Do you use the same one from DLG? <coughs> from Department for Local Government? Yes. Okay. Uh, and he saw that, the guy that did this audit, he saw that. Uh, the former judge executive failed to publish the prior year audit report. Uh, the audit report has now been published. Fiscal court did not, allow, did not follow up or escrow stale data checks. Uh, corrections have been made to update these. Do you have any more questions about the audit from 2017 and 18? Is there a complete draft of the audit now available? Uh, it should, I should have it. It's probably, uh, it's no, actually I don't have it yet. When you yeah. do get it, yeah. we all have a copy of it. Yes. All right. You have your, okay. All right, so the next item on the agenda is approval of nominees for the Trimble County Extension Board. Uh, and these are for four-year terms. You see the, the letter there in front of you from the extension office. Those are the people that they recommended, and we have two there to choose from. You have Will Sizemore. I don't know if you want me to name them. I might as well. Aaron Snelling, Jane Beckner, and Ken Cottingham. I would recommend Will Sizemore and Jane Beckner. Jane has, has worked before with the extension board and Will does a lot of work with the 4-H, uh, with the 
various programs for 4-H and he's actively involved with the extension board. I know uh, Ken Cotton, he hasn't been on the board prior and would have knowledge of the inner workings and all. So. I've known Aaron Snelling for a while, you know, just a, a great person, somebody we could rely on. He would, he would be an asset to have on any board. Well, my recommendation is for Will Sizemore and Jane Beckner, and uh, I'll make that in the form of a motion. Do we have a second? My motion dies for lack of a second. I turn the table to you all. I'll nominate Ken and Cotton Young. I second. Now let's get them, let's get two. two. I'll nominate Jane Beckner. Jane Beckner and Ken Cotton Young. That's Kirby, your motion? Yes. Kenny, your second? Yes. Any more discussion on it? Uh, I've never met Jane back I there. She may be a great person, but I can't really nominate somebody that I don't even know. Yeah. Well, we have a motion on the floor and a second to accept those two. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And all those opposed? Aye. Aye. Or nay? Uh, okay. All right. So, yeah. Sorry, okay. Susan. Well, Jane Beckner. Jane Beckner. Mm -hmm. Kenny second. Kenny second. Three. I voted four. Okay. No. All right, now the approval of commissioners for the Trimble County Water District Board. Uh, last, last month, we, uh, one, of the, one of the persons that we were going to put on the water board, uh, JD had said we could do it for one year. Uh, however, the statute says that it has to be a minimum of a two-year term. Uh, I would recommend that we put this person in, the, in a two-year term. And since that has happened, uh, since we made these appointments, one of the commissioners from the Water District Board has resigned. And I have a, a name to fill that one, too. Uh, uh got a question the one that resigned when was his term going to expire in december december of next year mm -hmm. december of next year of 2020 2020 so that would be a one-year term it's very close so um I, I had to leave the last meeting early because of court but the statute says the minimum amount of time that you can appoint someone is two years so we're violating the statute by just saying one year now in researching you can appoint someone to fill Barry's term until the 2020 term ends. Um, and then you can you can appoint another person at a two year or what have you. Um, but you can, that's an option on the table as well. We have to accept Barry's resignation first. Mm -hmm. Yes. Have you got that in writing? Yes, it's in writing. Yeah. He delivered it today over a fiscal court meeting. Do we accept his? So do we have a motion to accept his resignation? So moved. All right. Second. Thank you, Kirby. Thank you, Chris. All those in favor? Uh -huh. All right. And uh, because it was the court's uh, idea to put Dara in a one-year term, then I will uh, recommend that we appoint her to serve Barry's term. The remainder of his term. The remainder of his term. So do moved. I, thank you, Kirby. Second. Thank you, Kenny. And all those in favor? Uh -huh. Any opposed? Thanks. All right. And uh, that shows Dara has approved to fill Barry Wealthy's uh, position through December of 2020. And then there's still one vacancy, and I would like to recommend that Jonathan Turner serve in that position. Oh, I'll make a motion. Thank Second. you, Chris. Second. And that is for a two-year term. 
Uh, all those in favor? Uh, 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 I think it was Kenny. All right, so those are those two appointments. Thank you all for that. And Dara, I see you back here. And uh, Jonathan, you hear your news. All right, thank you. Uh, and now on to the next subject is Cedar Hills Road. Uh, last week, I received a petition. An application, actually. application uh, to put it on the county, there you are, Mike. Yeah. The county road system. Mike, do you get up and talk about this, please? Yeah, you to. Please. Yeah. Did you give a favor to the fiscal court mm -hmm. members in the package? All right. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Peter McCarra, and he's made an application under the statute. Uh, and that application requires fiscal court to make uh, a determination whether conditions of KRS. 178.405 have been met and the conditions that are laid out in that statute uh, as as regards cedar hills road fiscal court has to make a determination one whether cedar hills road is a private road street or highway that lies in an unincorporated area of trimble county that road actually lies down off of mount pleasant road which is clearly in an unincorporated area of Trimble County. So your answer to that part of the statute would have to be yes. Uh, the next part of that statute, I ask you to determine whether Cedar Hills Road has been used by the general public openly, continuously, and notoriously for a period of at least 15 years. The plan of that subdivision for, for Cedar Hills subdivision was planted and recorded in 1998 and lots were sold soon thereafter so it is clearly evident that that road has been used openly continuously and notoriously for more than 15 years so your answer to that condition has to be yes hold on uh, i don't see the date all these lots were sold is it on there every lot sold it doesn't say when they were sold, and he said that everybody was driving down this road and stuff. I don't see where each no, lot. I didn't say everybody. Well, I said did, lots were beginning to were so sold, and that road was when did put in continuous use in 1998 and, and to continue to the day. These are 19 lots here. When would each one of those sold? Well, if you'd like, I've got a copy of all the sure. deeds here, and you can look through them sure. at your convenience. But it exactly. goes back and clearly the road has been used and i'll get that to you uh, some other time uh, but the road has been continuously used for more than 15 years like i said the first lots were actually start were sold in 1998 and were sold uh, thereafter but that road has been used for a period of more than 15 years the next part of krs 178.405 that requires you to make a determination on what was there a petition prepared and signed by more than by 55 percent or more of all property owners that abut cedar hills road and in your packet there should be a copy of that petition which has signatures of uh, 19 of at least the 22 owners of the lots that abut that road so that's clearly more than 55 percent of the owners so your answer to that condition would have to be yes as well. And it, the last part of uh, the condition that, that you have to determine was, did that petition state that those property owners that abut Cedar Hills Road, were they willing to dedicate that road to public use? And it's clearly laid out in the petition, the language is in there, that by signing that petition, they are clearly willing to dedicate that road to public use. So, upon application of Mr. McCara, by satisfaction, as I laid out, you have to answer yes to the condition <coughs> of the statute. But then, uh, KRS 178.410, having answered, or having to answer yes to all the conditions of that, which means that you make a determination that those conditions have been met, and that is, uh, 
that you would affirmatively decide that then the statute clearly says that at that point that road street or highway is is considered to be dedicated to public use so uh, that that's uh, what the issue with cedar hills road is I know there's, there's a 178.010 that Crystal and I talked about. And can you read that, Crystal, or go into that? Sure. Um, first, I do want to um, state that in regards to 178.405, it says that it may be dedicated to public use. So with the petition, whereas they're requesting that they're willing to dedicate the road to public use, fiscal court still has the opportunity to say whether or not they want to dedicate it to no, public use. It doesn't make it permissive so. to fiscal court whether it's dedicated to use, it's whether the property owners are willing to dedicate it to public and, use. And that's, that's correct, but fiscal court can determine whether or not they want to put it on their county road system. Pursuant to statute 178010, number three, it says on or after July 13, 2004, a fiscal court may only accept a private road, street, or highway by gift if the private road, street, or highway has been constructed to meet minimum construction standards established by the fiscal court. There is an ordinance that indicates exactly what criteria is needed before a court can, before this court can consider whether or not to adopt that road into their county road system. And as rebuttal to that. The property owners aren't on Cedar Hill Road are not asking that the fiscal court accept it as a gift. They're not gifting it. They're asking the, the fiscal court to make a determination under these specific statutes that this road has been dedicated to public use. That's the only thing the fiscal court has to decide. This road is not being offered as a gift in any way. Mike, this, this road has not has an outlet nowhere. It goes doesn't up. have to have an outlet. But when you was on court before, I was. and you sent road viewers down there to see if that road is in respect for the county, what they asked for, right? And statute has changed since right. I was on this before. But you still have road viewers to go down there and check that out. They have to bring it up to county standards before you can take it on. And the county does not have to take on the road. We're not asking the, the county. To, to bring it up to standard. We're asking under the statute specifically, as you're required to by the statutes that I have laid out here tonight, to make a determination whether the conditions of 178.405 have been met, and they have. And from that, you're required to, to make a determination that the road has then been, been dedicated to public use. That's what you're required to do under statute. There's two other things that I want to bring out. Um, in the case Gosney versus Glenn, it's a Kentucky appellate court case in 2005, and the statute defines county road as a public road which had been accepted by fiscal court of the county. And in this particular case, it's, it's kind of akin to our case because there was no evidence in that case that the county ever accepted it. So the county still has to accept it. And they can do that based upon the ordinance that they've created um, in addition to using the KRS. So these aren't the only standards. They still have the ability to determine whether or not it's met their standards under if the ordinance. By these statutes, if you're arguing that and you're contrary to, to, to state statute, because state statute says once a determination has been made that the road is dedicated to public use, then at that point, fiscal court uh, acquires a fee simple title to the roadway and they're required to maintain it as it would any other road. It's clearly written in the statute that's before you today. It's in your time. If that's the case, that would open the door to every single driveway there. Chris Hembury who has created subdivisions without putting the proper roadway structure prior to our subdivision. The of this statute. If, if I may, I apologize, but prior to our subdivision regulations that were, were adopted by a previous fiscal court. So there are tons of county roads or ton, tons of private roads in this county that would, it would it would bankrupt probably by, by us having to do this pursuant to your argument today as well that. as every other county but that has county roads. this road has been presented by application in accordance with the statute and it's asked the court to follow state statute and make a determination whether this is a, a public road dedicated to public use. 
And as I laid out, the court can only answer yes because the conditions have been met under 171.405. How many lots are there? 22 numbered lots. And I think two that front on Mount Pleasant Road that are not numbered. So it's like 24, 24, 24 lots. Not all of them, but I think there are two of them that set back. I think there's 22 that have done. Six people signed your petition. Correct. Is that correct? Six individuals. Six individuals signed. 19 property owners. Six, six individuals signed it. I'm just getting facts. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not arguing. I'm just asking I'm questions. Answer questions. Yeah. And I, you know, one word makes all the difference in the world. In 178.405, it does say may, not shall, as far as taking it over. Now, if that does not. That's the way I'm too. reading it. And I'm not a lawyer, but that's the way I'm reading it. That is also the road that. Our fire department went down to put out an illegal burn uh, and sustained twelve thousand dollars worth of damage to your truck. I'm sorry, fifteen thousand to their fire. Truck. There was there's a deed amendment. To, is that what we call it? A deed amendment to this? I think it's in two thousand, where basically the homeowners association that for each year each property owner was to maintain that road at two hundred dollars a year for cost. And that, obviously that. Had no, I can't answer to that. Uh, again, what's been presented before you tonight, and what's before you is to make a determination where the conditions is 178.405 have been met. That's what you're asked here to do tonight under these statutes. And again, as I laid out, this road, whether it's a road that's in good shape, whether it's a road that you all don't want to fool with, and I understand that. I understand that. I understand your argument that it could open up a can of worms. But this, the other roads in the county aren't being considered. This is the only one. And this road, and I wouldn't be here before you tonight if it didn't meet the conditions under the statute. I wouldn't be here wasting my time, your time, everyone else. But this road, whether it's in perfect shape, which I know it's not, but it meets all the conditions of the statute. And the statute requires, it says you shall make a determination. With may. No. The statute says you shall make a determination once the conditions have been affirmatively uh, determined, uh, that you affirmatively uh, determined that the road has met those conditions. It says you shall. And, and that's 405 that's, that's and what it said it shall be implied when, it, when it's been used openly and notoriously for a period of at least 15 years it shall be implied that such a road street or highway may be dedicated for public use there, there's where you may we ought to put it in our attorney's hands because i'm telling you you're going to open yourself up for some lawsuits here yeah i also think 0.10 you know it's if they dedicated it, they're getting it, which they can say it's a gift. Yeah, they're so not they're dedicating it. They're not dedicating it to public use. They've made an application. They've, they've fulfilled the petition requirements. The road has met all the conditions of the statute. You all make the determination. They don't mean our county roads. That it's dedicated to public use. You're required to under statute. Well, we don't have to do that at this particular point in time. I would urge the court to table this matter until the next monthly meeting to give me an opportunity to fully look into your argument. Um, this agenda was provided on Friday, so you and I can talk in the interim to see if we can put our heads together and come up with an agreement. But based upon my research and based upon what I'm seeing, based on the case law as um, early as 2005, um, they still have the opportunity pursuant to our ordinance to not allow it to be a, a public use highway. I'll make a motion to table it until our, our county attorney said time to thoroughly research it and, and get with Mike and see what we can work out. Second. second. Who's that second? I think Kerry. And uh, any more discussion on it at all? All those in favor? Uh, and I just might add in, in closing, thank you all for your time. I hope I've answered your questions. And 
I appreciate the questions you had for me, but uh, there are penalty provisions that says if you willfully do not do what you're required to under statute, you are open to monetary penalties, so I'll just keep that in back of your mind as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. All right. Moving right along is uh, to uh, apply for a uh, debit or credit card, I don't see the words, uh, from the bank for fiscal court. As we are right now, Kenny, you, you had brought this up before about not ordering the uh, <coughs> baby change stations. Uh, I didn't want to do it on my card. Why can't we write a county check for that purchase? Uh, do you have somebody local that sells them? Because I, what I found was on the internet. <coughs> There's got to be vendors. And most of the companies, they, you know, pay with your cards. And I could have done it, but I did not want to. I don't in the past, we've never, this has never been an issue. I, I don't remember the former okay. judge buying anything on his credit card. <laughs> and it's reimbursed me that it always been a purchase order submitted, a bill sent to us, and we paid the bill. Okay. We got the bill <coughs> All right. So, so then the, you don't want to do the the credit card then? No. Okay. And and going on past that, uh, I gave you guys a copy of what <coughs> Crystal had made up for our purchase orders and for you know for more tracking. JD, you've got one there. Uh, you guys seen all those? This is for more more of our internal controls that whether it's the Walmart credit card or whether it's the Tracker Supply credit card. Before the card's taken, they're going to sign out, and what and the PO will say what they are going to buy, not what they bought. So it has to be done prior to the purchases being made. And that's what I—that's the same thing I was going to do with that card as well. That's why I went into that. All right. Well, we'll move right along. Uh, removing Wright Court at County Road 1037 from the County Road list. Uh, this is uh, a little uh, cul-de-sac off of, I want to say Sycamore or Sica, something down off of Palmyra. Uh, this family just bought the four acres that surround this little cul-de-sac and have asked if we would take it off the county road list. I know there's a, in that 178 there's a statute uh, that requires Seven. you to follow. Yeah, we have to ask for that. And my, my understanding is they are the only property owner around this. It's yes. What is it, like 200 foot? Four acres. Yeah, yeah, yeah 200 foot road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not very call a second in, but <coughs> it does have a fire hydrant and one, you know. That, right, the easement the will, still will still be there. They would still stand. As long as we follow, follow that, you know, this continuing the statute. The school bus turn around. Uh, maybe. No, it's, no, there's it's, another, there's other no, call sacks another, down that road. It's in Palmyra Estates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. And, uh, I mean, as long as they follow that, we got our own county ordinance. And right, by seven, we'll follow. have to, we'll have Crystal Creek, and if I'm wrong, we'll have to advertise that we'd like to. Well, there's, there's a few things you're going to have to do. You're going to yeah. have to put notices in three prominent and visible public places within one mile of the road, um, the cul de sac area. And then after the po posting of the notices, the fiscal court has to appoint two viewers who are neutral, who have no vested interest in the discontinuance of the road, and then them together with the county road engineer, which we don't have, do we? Nope. And okay. I think it says there has a replacement for the engineer. We can name a, our supervisor. Yeah. So we can, yeah. They shall view the road and report in writing at the hearing what inconvenience would result from the discontinuance, which in this particular case, I don't think that would be an issue, but you still have to follow KRS 178.070. Then a public hearing. But there's other done. people on that. No. No, there's not. Not on, not on that. It's the very first right off down on those things. I think it is called Sycamore Trace, maybe. I'm not I sure. I think it is too, but it's right, right. Are they on both sides of the road? No, both, both sides all around. All yeah. Yeah. And you can take it off if that's if they on both yeah, sides. Yeah, we'll road. advertise and it. advertise it, and they follow that statute there. Right. Yeah. Do we have a motion then to to go ahead and follow the statute to yeah, I'll make discontinue this road? I'll make that motion. JD, second. second. Any more discussion on it? All <laughs> in favor? Uh, uh, 
Motion passes. Thank you all very much. All right, and now uh, planning and zoning. Mike Powell's had asked to be put on the agenda. And Mike, I put you on there. So the first uh, text proposal that uh, the Planning Commission made to Fiscal Court in uh, July, which uh, the Fiscal Court did not act on. And then also a second text proposal of changes in the planning uh, <coughs> zoning ordinance from a uh, public hearing that was held October 10th. Uh, you have advertisements from the Trimble Banner for those public hearings. <coughs> Uh, minutes from January through September of the uh, Planning Commission. Uh, we don't have the October uh, 10th public hearing minutes uh, or this or uh, uh, because uh, we will be meeting tomorrow night so we'll have to get those two. And then also there are sign-in sheets uh, from the July 11th public hearing and the October 10th public hearing. And there's been some substantial changes that we've made following the advice of Tom Fitzgerald and I know Todd, uh, you and Crystal and Kenny met with a committee back uh, right after Labor Day. And uh, so it, we recommended uh, with the uh, Planning Commission adopted most of those proposals, pretty much all those proposals that Tom Fitzgerald from the Kentucky Resource Council recommended. If you want, I will be more than happy to read through the uh, finding the facts for those two. I did read through the first part of that in July, but I'll, I'll reread through those if you all uh, would like me to that pertain to some of the changes uh, that, we, that we have made and are recommending in the planning uh, ordinance. So what's your pleasure? Would you all like to hear those changes? Crystal, do you need to read them? I'm sorry? Does he need to read them, the changes? Well, he can, but the court can't act on the changes. So he can read it into the record, um, but the court can't act on the changes based upon the way that the agenda was presented. What is it? Are you going to be changing, by him reading it, are you going to be changing it as an amendment to the ordinance? Because if that's the case... Then it should be on the agenda to have the first reading of the amended ordinance. And published. So that you try to see. That's the only issue here. Should we have to amend the first reading because it's second? And it's null and void. Huh? It's null and void. The first reading of that amendment before is null and void. But, I mean, he can he can read it and then we can have a special meeting as long as it's published seven days before the first reading before the court for the court to accept the proposed changes in an amended ordinance. 
You would have to do a second reading also, don't you? Yes. Yeah, we'd have to do two readings. And and at our at our July meeting, we had a uh, we passed the first reading of an ordinance to repeal the second <coughs> ordinance. Uh, in August, when that came up again, it was tabled. Uh, Kenny, you had some things you wanted to talk to the planning commission about, and, and I think that's what Mike is talking about that was presented to Tom uh, Fitzgerald uh, in that meeting that we were out to listen to his changes. I think you can get it to them pretty quick. I mean, everybody's here, you just as well read them. Yeah. It'll, it'll just take me a few minutes. Okay. Uh, this is in regards to uh, the planning and zoning ordinance uh, 910.01 and 920.01. Uh, this proposal was made at the Trimble County Planning Commission by motion on June the 25th, 2019, and October the 10th, uh, 2019, and was considered in light of public testimony. Based on the evidence presented, the commission makes the following. Uh, finding the facts. The Trimble County Zoning Ordinance number 910.01 and 920.01 was enacted by the Trimble County Fiscal Court on November 19, 2018. On January 15, 2019, the Trimble County Fiscal Court suspended the enforcement of said zoning ordinance upon motion of the judge. <coughs> the Trimble County Fiscal Court requested the Planning Commission uh, reopen meetings and propose amendments to the ordinance to address commissioners and citizens concerns and to revisit the ordinance in the summer of 2019. Uh, proposal one text amendments proposed in July of 2019. In accordance there, the Planning and Zoning Commission took the following actions between January 15, 2019 and June 23, 2019. Held the monthly meetings advertised in the newspaper, including uh, uh, hearing public comment, met with approximately 175 individual citizens, and public officials hearing testimony from many of those regarding their concerns. And I also met separately with the Trimble County Cattlemen's uh, uh, Association also. I reviewed the zoning ordinance on a, uh, on a line by line basis to ensure compliance with the law, proper organization and adherence to the comprehensive plan. Propo uh, proposed the following substantive textual changes to the ordinances incorporating changes proposed by citizens, government officials, the zoning administrator, planning and zoning commissioners, and council. Uh, I, one, revise the uh, sign section to comply with new case law, remove restrictions on home occupations in an agricultural district, restructured and clarified the section concerning severances, and created the, uh, and approved, created and approved forms for the use of the zoning administrator. Uh, five, a copy of the proposed changes were submitted to magistrates, judges, executive, county attorney, and other public officials during the week of July 1, 2019. Notice of public hearing was published in, in the Trimble Banner on Thursday, July 4, 2019. Copies of the proposed changes were made available to the public in the office of the judge executive at the, and at the Trimble County Public Library. Written comments were accepted up through the day of the public hearing. Public comment was accepted at the hearing and in writing from official citizens, officials and citizens. The com uh, Planning Commission held a public hearing on July the 11th, 2019 at 6 p.m. At, at the hearing, Chairman Michael Piles introduced the proposed changes. Testimony was heard regarding an additional proposal concerning the sludge farm uh, as a conditional use in A1 district. Public testimony was received by magistrates, county judge executive, County Attorney and several citizens. A motion to recommend approval of the proposed changes as drafted with the exception that section 650, uh, number one, subsection C, number seven, should be deleted from the ordinance and uh, change to section, and ch a change to section 520 was made and approved by the one. Uh, proposal two, and this is regarding to the October 10th meeting, uh, the fiscal court took no action on the text services proposed on July 15th, uh, 2019. The court uh, remanded the ordinance back to the planning commission for further consideration. Between July 15th, 2019 and October 10, 2019, <coughs> the commission took the following actions. Held monthly meetings advertised in the newspaper included public comment. Met with approximately 25 individual citizens and public officials. Appointed a committee to meet with Tom Fitzgerald of the Kentucky Resources Council 
to advise the commission regarding the optimal defense, uh, defense against the disposal of sludge in the agricultural zones and other pitfalls from his experience in drafting zoning ordinances. Received and reviewed the recommended textual changes from Mr. Fitzgerald and took public comment on the same. Proposed the following substantial uh, textual changes to the ordinance, incorporating changes proposed by Mr. Fitzgerald, citizens, government officials, planning and zoning commissioners, and council. To streamline the additional requirements and setbacks, and clarify and simplify the uh, allowance, uh, allowance partial uh, sell-offs of uh, A1 property. Clarify the provisions regarding non-conforming lot structures and uses. Amend the language concerning the land application of solid waste or special waste as a conditional use in an A1 zone. And correct any clerical and typographical errors uh, uh, would, uh, for clarify, clar clarity and consistency. A copy of the proposed changes were submitted to magistrates, judge, executive, county attorney, and other public officials during the week of October 1, 2019. Notice of public hearing was published in the Trimble Banner on Thursday, October 3, 2019. Copies of the proposed changes were made available to the public in the office of the judge executive in the Trimble County Public Library. Written comments were accepted up through the day of the public hearing, although none were received. Public comment was accepted at the hearing from officials and citizens. The Planning Commission held a public hearing on October 10, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. at the hearing. Vice Chairman Charles McCoy introduced the proposed uh, changes. Public questions and comments by citizens and one magistrate were entertained. A motion was made to recommend approval of the proposed changes as drafted with two exceptions. Number one, section 650, one should remain unchanged and two additional language should be added to section 650 uh, section one subsection c number seven should contain a reference to krs uh, chapter 224 for definition of the terms added motion passed by unanimous vote the record contains proposal one and pro proposal two <coughs> text amendments advertisements in the banner minutes from the planning uh, meetings uh, january through september our hearing sign-in sheets from July 11th and October 10th. Signed findings of fact, conclusions of law, and recommendations to the fiscal court and the draft uh, ordinance. Uh, in conclusion, in cons uh, consideration of the text uh, amendments, proposal one and proposal two by the planning commission, the planning commission makes the following. <laughs> the proposal one text amendment complies with the applicable provisions of the comprehensive plan. A, Article 5, Section 510 and 520 clarifies the non-conforming use provisions. B, Article 6, Section 650, the addition of bed and breakfast as a conditional use in an A1 district. Uh, this complies with Section 2, Economic Development. Objective F, tourism shall be uh, explored as an economic resource while minimizing potential negative impact. C, Article 7, Section 770, Eliminate some requirements to qualify for zone change ex uh, exception. Complies with Section 2, Article uh, Agriculture and Objective E. Recognize that farms are investments and the owners should be allowed to maximize their use and value potential. D, Article 11, Sections 1120 and 1160. Update uh, signage provisions to bring in compliance with new case law. E, Appendix A, definitions 1, 18, 20, 21, 42, and 44. This complies with Section 2, Agriculture Objective E. Recognize that farms are investments and the owners should be allowed to maximize their use and value potential. And it complies with Section 2, Economic Development, Objective C. The expansion of existing businesses and clean industries should be promoted. And F, um, Section 6, Section 650, uh, number 1, subsection C, number 7, complies with Section 2, Agriculture Objective D, encourage land development practices so not to negatively impact adjacent agricultural lands. Uh, and this uh, proposal number 2, text amendment, uh, complies with the applicable provisions of the Comprehensive Plan, Article 1, Section 140, corrects a misstatement regarding the county subdivision regulations. Article 2, Section 230 and 250 reorganizes the exceptions for which a zoning permit is not required. 
uh, C, Article 2, Section 270, and Article 7, Section 760, and moves old Section 270 to the new Section 760, which reorganizes the provision for better flow and condenses the exceptions to the requirement for a zone change for cutoffs in an A1 zone. This complies with Section 2, Agriculture Objective B, encourage land development practices so not to negatively impact adjacent agricultural lands. And it complies with Section 2, Agriculture Objective E, recognize that farms or investments in the owner should be allowed to maximize their use and value potential. D, Article 5, Sections 500 5, and 530 through 580, clarifies and better organizes uh, and defines non-conforming lot structures and use, uses. And this complies with Section 2, Economic Development Objective C, the expansion of existing businesses and clean industry should be promoted. E, Article 6, Section uh, 650, it strengthens and clarifies the land application of solid and special waste as a conditional use and provides for additional safety for warehouse and rack house structures. And this complies with Section 2, Agriculture Objective B, encourage land development practices so not to negatively impact adjacent agricultural lands. F, Article 6, Section 690, condenses dimensional and area regulations for A1 parcels, which are less than five acres. This complies with Section 2, Agriculture B, uh, agriculture Objective D, encourage land development practices so not to negatively impact adjacent agricultural lands. And then Article uh, 7, Section 720 through 770, C Section 2C above. So for, for, for based on the foregoing findings of facts and conclusions of law, Trimble County Planning Commission does hereby one recommend approval of the text amendments listed in Proposal 1 and Proposal 2 as submitted here to and number two further recommends that the look back date for enforcement throughout the ordinance be explicitly stated as a date either today or a date in the future, for example, January 1, 2020. Uh, if not modified by the court, the ordinance as enacted provides that the look back date for nonconforming use uh, is the date on which the ordinance was, exact, was enacted on November 19, 2018. Since the ordinance has not been enforced since its enactment, the Commission does not recommend retaining that date because all of the projects completed in the last year would be non-compliant and necessarily non-conforming by no fault of the property owners. And that's respectfully submitted by myself, Trim County Planning Commission Chair. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Any questions? I have one. Yeah. How do you, how do you recommend the county pay for this to enforce it? I, mean, you got, I know you've worked very hard on it, and, and, and I applaud your efforts, but sincerely, how, how, what kind of price tag do you see this costing the county to enforce? Well, as stated earlier, when we started working on this, folks, what, four years ago, uh, the solid waste coordinator was designated as the uh, administrator of the planning and zoning. And, and on that, who does solid waste? If our solid waste coordinator does zoning administrator, who does solid waste? Well, folks, we work for you guys for nothing. So uh, well, that's up that's up to you all. Well, we done that interview with her. We were talking about planning and zoning too. We did, but but we also uh, agreed to pay her thirty thousand dollars a year. That person you're talking about was making about forty five and get a going to get a stipend. I think of about fifteen. And when I brought that up, didn't we stop that part of the conversation? Uh, we were talking. We were talking about the solid waste coordinator doing this. And I, I don't believe that that person, whether it's A or B, that person does not have time. Well, if we don't do something. We, we would have to hire somebody. Well, I want to go ahead. And maybe two. I want to go ahead and put this to the, what we got to do the first reading. Well, we'll, we'll have to have another meeting for that and then advertise to have it that we would be having. Whatever it takes, we need to get that done. I want to ask Mike a question. No, no, you go ahead. I, I've got a few questions to go ahead. Okay. With some of these changes you just read, I mean, it probably sound boring with all these numbers and articles and stuff like uh, that. You, you all see all the markups, additions, and deletions in the plan right now. We haven't 
and it would, they're in there, and <coughs> un until we get an approval, we can't right. we can't get a clean copy. Right. But some of the things that's in here, we talked about it, and uh, put that. It's trimmed way down from where it was, correct? Yes. So right now, it's basically, if you want, if like this was in after tomorrow, with these in here, if you want to build a deck, you want to paint your house, paint you can do that. Uh, anything, anything you have right now, you can do whatever you want to. It's just for new construction. And basically, new construction. Uh, if anybody wants to build a deck or remodel their home, anything under 576 that's square feet, you can do it. You don't need a permit for. That's almost the equivalent of three 200 square foot rooms. Right. So uh, it's trimmed way down from where it was, and I know. And basically, if you've got a farm, anything that qualifies as a farm, you can make three cuts, regardless of size, without being having to submit to subdivision regulations. And, and Mike, has this changed since the document you brought to my office in the beginning of this month? No. Okay. That, that, that's okay. So that, to that, inform that the public, that website. is on our website. I did upload all of yeah. that document. It's got the red mark. It does. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yes, that, that that was two of the changes, and then uh, Tom also, and I think Bob, you talked with Tom with the concerns about the sludge, uh, but uh, but he did that that was added back into. Uh, what do you mean to allow for it? Well, for protection against it. So yes, yes, you certainly can. All right, so <laughs> choose the deal. If you take out, if you take out the land farm then there's no legal control at all on it. By putting it back in and putting limits on it and defining it, then you have the control. And that's what Mr. Fitzgerald recommended. And the Board and of Adjustments. The reason we Thank you, Bob. Appreciate yeah, the, 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 board, the Board of Adjustments also can, can put additional restrictions as they see fit and as long as it conforms with the comprehensive plan. Now, Mr. And, Fitzgerald. And, no, I'm just going to say, uh, yeah, Mr. Fitzgerald is, uh, works for the Kentucky Resource Council, and he, I, I know he said in the meeting, because Kenny, I think you asked him, will this planning and zoning ordinance keep out sludge farming? He said, we can write it that way. Is that not correct? He's got to be 100%. So. Didn't he also in that letter that he sent to all of us say that the ordinance that we have in his legal opinion should have stopped it also? The solid waste ordinance? He He's, said should stop that also? He in said in that meeting. He said in that meeting with us and I think Todd and Crystal you were there that there's not a solid waste in the or, uh, solid waste ordinance in the state of Kentucky that will stop it. I wish I would have that piece of paper because uh, okay, yeah, I haven't seen the letter you're talking well, about. Well, he sent that letter to all of us. Yeah, it was, it was yeah, and he said in his yeah. legal opinion that the judge was wrong and they should have stopped it. This is what he said. Well, yeah, he mentioned, I case. think, what was it, Ohio County? I yeah, think I think so. Yeah, and that's yeah. what he said in his Union. legal opinion. What well, Union County, that's right, yeah, yeah. Union yeah. County. And but he said opinion. there's not a solid waste ordinance in the state that will stop it. But in his legal opinion, he thought it should have. Okay. Well, that's not that's not what he said the other day we met with him. Okay. All right. So I'll go ahead and make. I was a table this. No. No. Well, we don't we don't have. Uh, we could still discuss though. Are you want to discuss it? We could we could not have a first still, reading. Okay. We can't have a first just, reading. We can't have a first reading, but I mean, if they're still discussing, I was, I was discussing too. Ricky Stock on Mark, the attorney we held in. Rich. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rich. Yeah. That we got on the painter for consulting at that time. We met Crystal Kenny and I met with him, and he said at that point, I think that was on a Thursday, I believe, and he he told us only plans only would stop it, and he looked and he said you need to go forward with it because her solid waste wouldn't, and he would be glad to be on the other side fighting for a sludge farm or owner against our solid waste workers. I mean, it's here for protection. Mike, plain and simple. Can I ask you a question? Sure. I know Henry County is still having um, there's violations which the state still has not ruled upon as last I heard um, as to the violation of this same sludge farm in Henry County. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding they are dumping untreated wastewater on that property 
and the state's aware and the planning and zoning in Henry County, and again, this is just my understanding, I'm not part of those groups, but um, it's my understanding that their planning and zoning can't stop them because the state hasn't ruled. My question is, is I know that our original planning and zoning was mirrored after Henry County. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we have enough tools in our toolbox in <coughs> our drafted planning and zoning regarding the sludge farms and the traditional use versus a, a stronger copy than Henry County. Well, I, all, all I can say to that is that I have <coughs> concern of Bob's and then Bob, Bob, you did call him yes. and, and he did assure Bob that that was the case. That issue is not before the courts, it's before the fact that they had it in effect before they put in their planning and zoning. Their planning and zoning was not approved or not necessarily brought before Mr. Fitzgerald, but he has worked with them. Okay. So it's not our issue what Henry County does. Sure. This is the ordinance that we are asking to be to be brought in. And it has good points. It is adjustable, it is reasonable, and it is protective for the very things that we're trying to come in and destroy the property and the land of the community. So it needs to be enacted. You know what I'm saying, can I make, can we make a motion to have the first reading, set a date for the first reading? Yes, we can do that, and it'll be a special meeting. Yeah. We can do that. I, I want to make a motion to have a special meeting have the first reading and get this thing going. Could that have to be done? Would that have to be no, done? No, no, I'll just I'll call with the right meeting. advertising. I'll with call a special the, meeting to to advertise this. Have it advertised. And and then we still have that, that motion or that first reading of the ordinance to repeal too. That I'll put both those on there and we'll see what shakes out. Let the court decide. Anything else? When when will we have a special meeting? If we're just going to do that and not ask questions, I already know I'll go ahead and make my motion to have the second reading to repeal it. If we're still going to charge anybody in A1, A2, A, R1, R2, or R3 any money to build a house on their land, then I can't support this. I'm not going to support it anyways, but that was one of my things. Why do we need a permit for that if they follow our setback rules and if they get with our road guys? Let them build a house. Well, one of the things is so you can find out where growth is occurring uh, in the, in the you, county. You still, have, you still have to do that. You still have to get with well, they the- They've got to get electrical permit and a plumbing permit too. So, so yeah, there you go. And we will help them do all that, but we don't have to charge them a fee. And then uh, your uh, non-conforming, that still bothers me. If somebody built a house seven foot from the line, and now you enact this, they want to add on that two bedroom house, add a room, it doesn't matter what size they want, they can't add on to it unless they come up. And ask for it. But if you read Gallatin County's non conforming okay. lot, okay. they got a house on it, it's seven foot from the line, R says eight foot. Mm -hmm. If he wants to add on the non conforming size, not getting it no closer than that seven foot, he wants to make his two bedroom a three bedroom, he's still got to come up and get a permit because it's a non conforming lot. But if you read Gallatin County's, and I've told you all this, I don't know, 10 times, it says if you build on the non conforming side, you can do it without permit. Let, let me ask you a question. Yes, if we had Gallatin County's planning and zoning, would you vote for it? Uh, no, <laughs> but I, 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 I know how I'm much a permit would cost for a 2,000 square foot house? A hundred bucks. Right. That's what it would cost. Yeah. What's well, it would cost to make all the permits? All right. Yeah. All, all I don't want just to go into that. So, yeah. you have any more questions? In any of you guys. Well, we're going to have to have a special meeting on this. Okay. What's the thing for you? Yeah, all the permits are going to be Like I said, I'm not going to vote for it, but I'm going to convince the people in my area to vote for it. But if you all don't do that, they're not even going to buy into it. You're going to have half your community, over half your community, not wanting it. Well, the, right. the, the, only October permit, permit, the only permit that would be required that's next, for the most next Monday. Monday. I don't have your old schedule on, on my hold on it. October 28th. Mike's got the floor for you. No, no, I can see it. Hold on, hold on a minute. Like a minute. Oh, yeah. I know. That's why, I, yeah, let him have it. 6.30, 7 o'clock. It'd be at least a 6 o'clock meeting. 
because I'd like October the people 28th. to show it on October 28th. Six That's next Monday. Mm -hmm. That would be the paper. Yeah. Uh, it's got seven. You're right. Seven days. Seven days. Let's go 29. What day is that? Well, the paper will come out for Thursday. Until Thursday. Make it tomorrow. Make it tomorrow. Let us know. Yeah, yeah. I'll just call a special meeting and we'll put it on Facebook so everybody can know okay, when that is. Because I'll have to look at these guys' work schedule and see what they can what they can come up with. No, Thank you, Mike. I was, I was just going to say we pretty much eliminated the need for per, uh, for permits for any renovations uh, if it's under 576 square feet. So the only permits required would be for new new construction. All right. Thank so, you. Mike. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah. Like that for like say. All right. Uh, the next thing uh, I need to inform you all is that uh, at our last meeting in September, uh, the Harmon brothers had sent us a letter saying that they were going to increase their fees from sixty-five to ninety-five dollars a head for dead animal removal. Uh, as of September 30th, they sent another letter mm -hmm. saying that they will no longer be in the business of dead animal pickup in our county. Uh, they're going out of business. So uh, at the present time, I have not found anybody else. I've talked to judges in Oldham, Henry, Trim or uh, Carol, uh, Owen, Gallatin, uh, trying to see what they're going to come up with uh, for our dead animal removal. They have nothing. So. Uh, I'm not sure how we're going to proceed. I'll keep looking, but uh, I think this is a thing in the community. If I may, uh, I'm chair of conservation here in Charlotte County, and there's a statewide program that's been going on for years through NRCS to where farmers, Kirby and I talked about this a little bit. I need to talk to every one of y'all individually about kind of the future of this. Um, you know, they've got dead animals where the farmers are disposing of the animals on their own farm through conservation. And composting them? Yes, yeah. And we, we just got to talk more about it and maybe get something going. <coughs> and, and, but conservation can still get the money in. Uh, we get a $7,500 grant, um, you know, from the state for the dead animal. And we'll continue to get that in, but we'll try to work with the court and find a way to get farmers set up on their own property to do this and go forward. Yeah. So, and and uh, the extension office has a lot of information about composting of the well, dead animals. Con well, conservation is going to have it all. Okay. They've Good. got a plan. I mean, matter of fact, in our 10 minute supervisor training that we had two months ago, that it was on uh, composting dead animals. It had the full diagram, <coughs> pictures, all that stuff. So I'll get all that for you guys, all that info to look at. Is there a place in so the neighborhood that does that? I, I, I had something to say training too, and they were talking about that. There might be some guys, I can do some research, there might be some personal property owners out in, in different counties that are taking on and doing this, but it's a pretty big, you know, as you've seen, you've all seen the paperwork, you know, yeah. at, at most of how many animals that you might have. So you're talking about a whole other thing. I think just you guys need to get educated and everybody in the county, the county does, all the people that own livestock. And, I think we can figure out a, a good way to do it. And keep it in hand. Yeah. And Thank maybe we can have a local cost share to help those farmers get started. And as far as like the mulch and stuff is concerned, you know, we could maybe have a storage facility or, or just a pile up behind the county barn that could be loaded for farmers. We just got some things to talk about Place in the it. future. Maybe we can come up with a plan to keep it out and keep, to keep farmers from Throwing them in sinkholes and stuff like we used to, right. where we are contaminating the water and the like creation. Yeah. yeah, so that's, I'm worried about that. Because yeah. once, you know, as long as it's, if it's kind of a, you know, if it's a pain for them to have to dispose of those and get rid of them, and it's going to cost them something, there's some of them that might turn the other way and start throwing them back in sinkholes and all that. We can't have that. Right. we got we got to keep things going on. Right. <coughs> Maybe you could report to us at the next meeting, Jonathan, yeah. what you got. I'll try to yeah, get all get stuff together. That works. Thank I'll, you. I'll call you guys if you want to do it. Yes, thank you so much for that. Uh, and then, I, uh, you know, back in uh, January or February, we started talking about putting up a Veterans Memorial. The Masonic Lodge is going to put it up. Uh, and there was some conversation back and forth about 
fiscal court maybe put, paying for the concrete pad. Uh, would all the members of Masonic Lodge please stand up? How many we got here tonight? Yeah, I'm one of them. Uh, as you all know, there's a diverse group of men here who represent the Masonic Lodge that goes back to time immemorial. Uh, these guys have uh, dedicated a lot of time to raise money to pay for this gazebo and uh, the cost of a, uh, a footer or a platform for it to go on is $2,900. I'm asking fiscal court for, for approval to pay for this uh, concrete pad to put this gazebo on for a veterans memorial. Did you advertise this? Uh, it is does not reach that threshold. I had a hard time just finding flat workers. I thought we tabled this and Concrete they found out because this was in we tabled All that motion until we found out how much it was going to cost. Then we were going to approve. Yep. That's where we was at when we left off. So yeah, twenty nine hundred. That's that's a, that's a one one guy that finally agreed to give me a price. And they're, and they're going to build it. Absolutely. And it's going to be the sixteen footer. Yeah, so, well, the, the pad, no, the pad, we, we scaled it down to like a 12 foot gazebo, well, and it's a 14 foot pad. I'll go off of what we've had, I think it was in August, to table until you found it out the price. There's, it's $2,900. $2,900. I'll go take that motion off table, go with that motion, make a motion we uh, can you con contribute $2,900 for the Mason's gazebo to for that work to move forward. All right. We're going to make the money to them so we don't have to give a bid to everyone's getting yeah, right. people right. in the concrete. Right, right that's right. 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 I, yeah, I'll make that motion. All right. I second it. We got a second. And all those in favor? All right. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you guys for that. Judge, if I may. Please do, Russell. Members of the Court, I would like to say a special thank you for Milford Lodge, <coughs> number 158. For some of you all that don't know what Masons do in the community, uh, what was it, Peter? Four weeks ago, we had a fishing tournament for some young people. It was uh, paid for by the Masonic Lodge here in Trimble County. Last year we had 37 children. This year we had over 70. And it was a pretty awesome time. Every person, every child there that went fishing that day got to take a prize and a gift home. This is one of the things we do. But we, we thank you for the opportunity to build something honor our veterans yes. and that's why we're all here tonight by the way so thank you very much you. Uh, I got a quick question sure. I know that, that you all put on a fundraiser out at the park to raise some money for the playground equipment so where, where are we at on that I mean is it I got an answer just laying it you want to answer that or? I yeah uh, well we have uh, talked with Mitch uh, Farms, mm -hmm. uh, and we collected information about all the handicapped children in the 25 mile radius, and then passed that information on to him because he's building a case study to uh, get the money to build this this playground. So we're we're waiting on Mr. Mitch Barnes. Who's Mitch Barnes? He is the gentleman that runs Saddleback East. Okay. And he is also someone that has been involved involved in. Uh, building playgrounds and splash parks uh, in the Louisville area. That uh, I think the Miracle Park is that is that his big one. That is one of them. The last one they just did. Uh, it's about a three-year case study from the time the case study starts to you actually turn dirt on this. The demographics within 25 mile radius of Trimble County Park, which is where we would like to locate it. Uh, they do a demographical study. Indiana, Kentucky, how many handicapped or disadvantaged children are in this perimeter? And then from there, we go to large corporations and large companies asking for funding for this. This is not going to be a, a money raiser at the park in two weekends. We're going to pull magic off. We're looking at something between six hundred and $800,000 playground. Now, if you go down on the river at Madison, there's a nice one down there that... Uh, factors have put in the floor is not dirt it's not gravel it's ground rubber it's very safe 
and this is what we want to go after. If we do it, we want to do first class. We don't want a second class because we want people to come from Carrollton. We want them to come from Madison. We want them to come from Versailles, Kentucky, down here to Trimble County because we have a park that we can be proud of. So we are working on this. It's not going to be magic. It's not going to be today or tomorrow. But believe you me, we're not going to give up till we get it. The state of Kentucky put three of those poured crumb rubber in, and uh, that Lisa Evans that you work with will be who you need to contact. And they gave them grants on that, and they will look wonderful. Same as that poured crumb rubber over there. Yeah, it's a big, big about the gazebo. When, when are you looking now or this spring, next spring? If we may wait it warms up, it gets too cool for yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yes, yes, I'm kind of. If you get the concrete down, and we'll put the building up. How's that? Oh, well. Yeah. Right. It'll come. All right. All right. So the last thing I have, guys, is two uh, costs from a AGC, Advanced Global Communications. Uh, we just signed on with their with their contract for IT, and they did uh, an assessment of our uh, computers. Windows 7 is going to become obsolete on January 14, 2020. Uh, we have eight of our computers that are using the Windows 7 operating system. Uh, but tonight, I'm just asking for approval to buy two computers for the office. That would be the one that Regina uses and Crystal and uh, Lisa. Uh, we need to upgrade those computers. The, an estimate for that is $1,746.66. No, I'm sorry, $1,846.66. Those computers come with three-year warranties. Uh, as you can see, they're the, they've got the Windows 10 Professional. And uh, included in this price would be the interfacing with Fiscal Soft so that we can update our, 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 uh, our fiscal books. Uh, and as Regina can tell you, we have all kinds of problems with that fiscal software now. Could you speak a little bit about that, Regina? Um, well, I know that we have updates that we can't update because our, because we don't have Windows, because we just right. have Windows 7. Yeah, and, and our processor is an i3, and they want an i5 or an i7. Yeah. And these computers uh, are with an i7. Okay, what's, what's, the, what's the other one here? For? And then the next one is, the 1700 one, is to make upgrades to our server. That even if we buy the new computers, unless we upgrade our server, putting in the firewalls and stuff, uh, it, we still can't upgrade our fiscal soft. What, uh, so I'm very well, unfortunate. Like Kayla's up, because she has to bring her laptop And, up. and yes, so we're, we're gonna have to update hers too, but, and, and I'm sorry for Michaela, but the primary computers that we need right. yeah, right. are the office. Yeah, we'll keep it. Yeah. Well, and that, that's uh, 1846 for the computers, that's 1719. And 47 cents for the upgrades to the server. It comes with three year warranties. And, and they, the computers come with three year warranties. Yeah, I, I mean, I know we got a bit of budget to cover, so I'll make a motion we go ahead and get them to make, to, you know, or we're going to be, and we'll have an IT person with yeah. another person. Well, and and then we need to be thinking about all the computers that have Windows 7. Right. Uh, because yes, the computers will still run to have Windows 7, uh, but security updates and things like that, that that come naturally will not happen after January. Anybody who has Windows 7 uh, will not happen after January 14th, 2020. So I'll make a motion we purchase it. All right, are you, are you looking at both of those together, Chris, and combine them in <coughs> total? Yeah, I mean, why not have like right? I agree. Computers we have to have both servers going to be obsolete. Yeah, and that's what I'm asking for approval of both these uh, proposals that I just got today. We don't want to. I mean, we, we need it. Right. We got it. Right. All seconds. All right. Thank you, Kirby. And all those in favor? Uh, Aye. All right. All right. Now I'll allow time for some public comment. Does anyone have anything? Go ahead, Peter. Yeah. <coughs> On what Crystal said when he pulled us up, um, she said that she wasn't aware of this until a week ago. On July 29th is when I informed Todd and Chris this. And um, then on, I believe, uh, August 12th, he had a meeting with you that was allotted two hours over the same thing. 
That's all that I wanted to say. I was aware of the issue. I wasn't aware it was on the agenda. That's what I was saying. Okay. I just wanted to click, kind of clear it up that you didn't get blindsided with this a week ago that this has been going on a while. It, it has. That moved to September 5th, I think. We didn't meet on 12th. Thank you, Peter. I see a hand, but I don't see a face. Yeah, no, it's trying to grow. <laughs> I, would ask, too. I would ask that the uh, computers that you now have in the judge's office, once you get the new ones, be quarantined and to be sure that they are clean and have not been damaged or corrupted since uh, <coughs> the new systems. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to offer the court? Any of the magistrates? Uh, back to the computers. I was going to ask about physical software. <coughs> you answered a minute ago. We need this upgrade for all our physical software. That's what they say. Yeah, we have some upgrades out there that we right. can't. Yeah, right. we can't actually upgrade. And our time clocks. Yep. Where are we at? And, and they're going to be. They have to get that server done to get this done. So to get the time clocks. So all they same. Can, yeah. Oh, yeah. Advertise it to sell it? No. Oh, yeah, to sell it. All right. Yeah. We want sealed bids? Well, I thought we were going to do this in like June. Who could work? Sealed bids on it? On that Yeah. Yeah. Everybody agree on that? Sealed bids? Yeah. With your notice, and I'm sure you will, but we have the right to reject all bids. Yeah. And I, I would recommend we put it somewhere like the Courier Journal so we have more eyes on it. I don't want to put it in the Trimble Banner and 1,400 people see it. And if there's going to be certain restrictions, because I know that Kirby had mentioned some restrictions that he would like to put into it. So, no, you're okay. Don't kick me anymore. Don't tease it. But um, I would like to view the notice that before you put okay. in there to where we can incorporate right. the restrictions. And then maybe fiscal court can approve right, I think, the notice. Yeah, something like, it, you know, it's, it's, somebody's going to preserve it, you keep in mind the historical value of it. It, is it on the historic road? No, it is not. It is not. No. no but it could be. She researched it. Yeah. No, it's not right now. Right. All right. Guys, yeah, I, mean, I do appreciate all of y'all coming. Yeah, I do. I have one question. Oh. Is it okay with getting a new computer too? Not at this time. Eventually she will. She potentially has one of the most important jobs in our community for now. And needs to track her, her work. Yeah, I was, I was over with her the other day and she had to use her glass off the show. I absolutely feel like she needs one and just kind of flip over and change her. Yes, it's probably. Yeah, she will yeah. be. She will be I'll getting one soon. How about that? <laughs> the very new computer, do you know? Yeah, I asked you if the, if the IT people would be hired. They'd come over and you said they had to. No. Yeah, they need to look at it. Because I don't think it's a computer maybe three years old, four years old. No, I like we just either. purchased it uh, the last quarter. They know over one time to see about the security on it. Maybe they can run. Well, they they've been in the last month. They've been running a diagnostic on all the computers, and okay. and they reported back uh, about the computers that we need new ones, uh, eight specifically. Uh, but I, my belief is the most important two are the ones that Regina, Vicky, and or uh, Lisa and uh, Crystal use for our fiscal books. I, I I know she needs one too, but. Our fiscal software, I think, is paramount. That's that's why I'm recommending we do these today. All right. And then we, I know she needs one really bad, but if we <coughs> can't keep track of our dollars, uh, it's not going to do us any good. Well, if it's just running slow, it might have some type of virus or something. Yeah, right. That's what I was thinking. Well, they, they didn't detect yeah. that in the in the diagnostic. Have they looked at that for things like that? Yeah. Uh, Could we get them over? They, they, they've been look, they've been looking at the diagnostics from each computer. They, they didn't detect anything. Until we motion to adjourn. All right, we have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? All those in favor? Uh -huh.